Corsair is getting back into the dual chamber PC case game in both a bigger and smaller way. And today, we're gonna talk about one of their newest offerings in the category. This is just one of Corsair's new 6500 series PC cases. And we have to know everything about them. What parts fit inside, how easy cable management is, and how they take their coffee. I'm guessing this one takes it black. Well, we're gonna find out almost all of that and more right now, right here on Robitech. This isn't Corsair's first rodeo when it comes to dual chamber cases. Heck, it's not even their second. But rather than reliving their glory days, flipping their emo hair from side to side and yelling, it's not a phase, mom, they took everything that people loved about the 690X and the Air 540 PC cases and let them inspire the 6500 series for a new generation of PC builders. And here it is, at least, one version of it. Corsair's 6500 series are available in two variants, the Airflow Focus 6500D and the Showcase Focus 6500X. Both cases have a tempered glass side panel, but the 6500X has a tempered glass front panel as well. And if you've been following Corsair for a while, this is not a new naming convention. Then there is a third option that we have to mention because it adds a little pizzazz to the 6500X. That's this case right here, the 6500X RGB. The 6500X RGB adds three of Corsair's new IQ Link RX120 performance RGB fans to the case, as well as a white IQ Link system hub if you get a white system or black if you get a black system. Now the Corsair 6500D and 6500X cases retail for $199.99, while the 6500X RGB retails for $259.99. As far as dimensions go, the 6500 series cases are about 12.91 inches or 328 millimeters wide, about 18.97 inches or 481 millimeters tall, and about 19.53 inches or 496 millimeters deep. For case IO and controls, the 6500 series cases have four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, as well as a power, a reset button, and a combination audio jack. All of the case IO connections and buttons are located in the top right-hand side of the case, which you'll either love for your convenience or despise when all of your plugged-in cables make your PC look like a squid. Listen, I'm not gonna yuck or yum if you like having squid nearby. That's a choice that's yours to make. What is also a choice is that Corsair offers each of these cases in both black and white, but wait, there's more. Corsair also sells five different elite PC case panel kits for the 6500 series. These panel kits that replace the front and top parts of the case right here bordering the mesh or the tempered glass, you can either get brushed aluminum for $99.99 or add a bamboo, teak, or walnut woodsy aesthetic to your build for $74.99. These are just a few of the options from Corsair, but I also think there's gonna be more in the future if the design takes off. It's kind of like the whole Xbox, you know, I don't know if you remember the Xbox 360 with the face plates. Now you can get like face plates and I think they're gonna let you print on there as well. Now, as far as weight goes and, and, and get ready for this, this thing weighs in at a hefty 30 pounds and 13.8 ounces. Now moving inside of this house of glass and steel, the 6500 series case supports micro ATX, mini ITX and ATX motherboards, as well as EATX motherboards, up to 270 millimeter or 10.9 inches wide. On paper, that's enough space for the monstrous motherboards like the Asus RG Maximus Z790 Extreme, but not quite wide enough for the Z790 Aorus Extreme X. Did the extra X, is, is that like what pushed it over the line? Like, no sir, we've had like one X too many and you do not need another, thank you very much. Now there's one more thing I wanna talk about as far as motherboards go, but you're gonna have to wait a little bit on that. See how we're like trying to get them to stay through the whole video? Now as for GPU, the 6500 series supports graphics card up to 400 millimeters or 15.748 inches in length without a front mounted radiator or 370 millimeters or 14.56 inches with a radiator installed in the front. While either orientation leaves space for some of the longer GPUs on the market, if you're front or side mounting a radiator, you might just wanna be mindful of that fit. Now, since we're talking about radiators, the Corsair 6500 series can support either 280 or 360 millimeters at the top and bottom of the case, while the side mount is limited to either a 240 millimeter or 360 millimeter radiator. If you're looking at the 6500D or the airflow version, the front can support either 280 or 360 millimeter radiator just like the top and the bottom. Now, a quick note here. We did notice that the gap at the top of the case between the mounting bracket and the mesh is very narrow. If the AIO you're planning on installing has thicker washers, you might just wanna swap those out for some thinner ones. As for the fans, the top and the bottom of these cases can support either three 120 millimeter 
440 millimeter fans with the front of the 6500D supporting the absolute same. Now you got three 120 millimeter fans on the side for intake and either one 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fan in the case for the rear exhaust. Since the model we received was the 6500X RGB, we had three fans pre-installed, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Now, as for air coolers, Corsair gave us about 190 millimeters or about 7.48 inches of clearance to work with. But unless you're using the 6500D, we don't recommend using a tower style cooler in cases without direct airflow supplying the actual air cooler. It's just not great for performance and we don't wanna do that to you. What we do want though, is for you to slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss videos like this one, live streams where we build in cases like the Corsair 6500 series and give away PCs, laptops, monitors, and so much more. I mean, I mean, we've given away so much just in the beginning of the year. Now let's talk about PSU support. Corsair did something really thoughtful here for the 6500 series. While the PSU mount is located near the bottom of the case, there is a cubby hole to tuck like extra cables, hide controller modules, or maybe create a small apartment for your favorite animal, like, you know, like a little hamster down there. I mean, sure, they, they might eat your cables, but you know what? There's some nice space to work with down there. As for drive mounts, Corsair did something pretty neat with the 6500 series. In the back, there's a removable panel that gives access to two hot swappable 3.5 inch bays. And then right on the outside, there are mounting spots for two additional 2.5 inch drives. And I also have to point this out before we move on. There's a huge thank you to Corsair here. Thank you so much for matching your case cables to the color of your case. It's a little thing, but I can't tell you what a downer it is when you've got a crisp, clean Arctic whiteout build ready to plug in and enjoy, and then you have mismatched black whatever cabling. Dude, it just, it throws off my groove, man. Speaking of grooves though, Corsair 6500 series cases are compatible with both MSI's Project Zero and ASUS's BTF Back Connect series of motherboards and components. These cutouts provide ample room for motherboard connections like fan headers and turtle USB, board and CPU power, and so much more that come with back connect motherboards. We got to see the case for the first time at CES and we would have loved to show it to you sooner, but Linus was pretty busy making his own video with it before he photobombed one of ours. And you know what? You know what, I'm not even mad about it. I'm just, I'm just glad we finally met in person. I mean, we've done crazy collaborations together, but we actually have never met, which was pretty crazy. We did, however, build a 6500 XRGB on the live stream recently, and it was cool to see not only how excited people were about this case, as well as showing off the potential of building back connect systems, but there's a nice little bonus thing that I want to talk about in there. Because of the back connect creaks, the little crevices, I was able to run cables like it was like hidden behind the motherboard. It was pretty rad. Will this become the new motherboard standard? Who knows? but it is really neat to see another option for PC builders and a means for less seasoned builders to put something together that's really clean looking without a ton of trouble. Not only that, but Corsair's decision to actually make this case back connect compatible is big news for the standardization of the motherboard form factor. Now that we understand how much we can slap into this puppy, it's time to talk about thermals. While idling, the Corsair 6500X RGB averaged 29 degrees Celsius on the CPU and 33 degrees Celsius on the GPU. These numbers position the 6500 near Lee & Lee's Evo RGB, the NZXT H9 Flow, and the Cooler Master TD500 Mesh V2. Under full CPU load, the 6500X hung out in the middle of the PC case pack with CPU temps at 74 degrees Celsius and GPU hovering around 30 degrees Celsius. This positioned the 6500 series case between the ASUS ROG Hyperion and the non-RGB Lee & Lee O11 Evo. As for our 1440p gaming benchmarks, the 6500X was smack in the middle of our charts with CPU temps at 48 degrees Celsius and GPU thermal performance averaging 58 degrees Celsius. The 6500X buddied up with cases like the APNX C1 and the Height Y70. While we look at our charts, the thermals were decent, but we'll unpack all that when we talk about closing thoughts here in a minute. Now to get there, we have some considerations that are worth pointing out if you're looking at this for your next PC case. Thing number one is that the case teardown isn't quite as easy or intuitive as we'd like for it to be. Starting with the glass side panel, the thing is on a hinge and it has a latch point at the underside of the case. And it's not a negative, but I felt kind of dumb just trying to figure out how it was being held in place and how to open the thing. This panel does have a screw holding it in place on the hinge, so if you're not looking for it, it might seem like you have to take off the entire hinge of the case, which you don't have to do, you just have to remove that screw. Now the screw was a bit tight for us, 
on the first build, but if you watch this build the 6500 XRGB on stream, it ends up being a non-issue. What was, however, an issue was getting the PCI covers out. While the covers look like they're held in by thumb screws, they were super tight to get out. And I had to use three different screwdrivers to find the right fit. And honestly, I was super worried about stripping them out. And the only thing too is, their overall, like their circumference is small compared to the other ones. They're tiny and I don't know, this is just one thing I really wish they would change. It's also worth mentioning that we love the design of the drive tray, but it does look like it could get in the way of CPU power connectors on the back connect motherboards. This might be a non-issue if you're using like really flexible cables, but it also might mean that the drive tray does have to be sacrificed to make more room for the cables. Again, these are the things to think about when you're planning your build, not necessarily things that should keep you away from actually choosing this case. Now, thing number two is observational, but these are things that might be concerning and worth bringing up here. Our 6500X RGB came with the RX120 fans installed on the side intake position, but the fans were installed for exhaust, not intake. This was easy to fix since the side intake fans are on a removable bracket, which by the way, is the only removable fan bracket in the case. But we couldn't test whether or not this fan orientation worked for this case since there weren't drivers ready for the fans when we started our testing. Typically, we like to leave stock fans installed during our testing so that you have a better picture of the out of box build performance. So we did the next best thing, we swapped out the RX120 fans for Corsair QX120s. They aren't a one-to-one -one comparison, but they give us a decent approximation of performance. So that leaves us in this funny place with thermals. Again, it was decent, neither terrible nor impressive, but as we've preached with other PC cases, your performance is going to largely depend on the components you put inside. Higher powered components are going to generate higher heat, be conscious of this, and the 6500 series case will work fine for you. Then again, if you're looking for better thermal performance, the 6500D might be the better choice. Before we move on from fans, we have to point out that Corsair is using new fan screws that are called quick turn screws. These are supposed to be one turn screws to help builders install their fans quickly and then move on. Basically, Corsair has ruined any love that I have for normal fan screws, which to be honest, I never had love for but these new screws save so much time. I think I'm gonna need a bucket of these things because they're awesome. Okay, thing number three. Like the new screws, here are a couple more things that we really loved about the case. These cases were made for IQ Link, and it makes sense seeing that it is a Corsair case, but the integration, it's just brilliant. There are cable channels specifically designed for IQ Link cabling, so rather than having to guess where the best spots are for the cables, Corsair has everything laid out for you. They're so nice, and Corsair laid them out in a super smart way too. But if you're not looking to use IQ Link, Corsair does have a cable management add-on, the Rapid Route Kit, that adds extra tie-downs for cables. Even without the routing kit though, there is a ton of room for cable management. I was able to gather up all of my power cables into a bundle the size of a banana, and it fit without an issue literally showed that it was the size of a banana. So that's not even just a funny joke. We also really like that there is an easy option for customization with swappable panels. This is an easy way for novice builders to have a boutique looking build without the effort of fully modifying the case. I can also see where PC modders like our friend Ron from Blue Horse Studios having a blast making custom panels to fit these slots. And hey, stick around because you'll probably see some of them used right here on Robitech. Overall, the Corsair 6500 series is everything that we've come to expect from a Corsair PC case. They're solidly built, fairly straightforward to build in, and they add Corsair's iconic flair, fit and finish into the category of dual chamber cases. And it works. We love the 6500 series for their smart design for both back connect and standard motherboards and the multitude of ways you can cleanly run cables. I mean, the builds just look so clean. So if you're looking to build a beautiful showcase PC or you want a dual chamber case to build in, the 6500 series is actually pretty slick. As we wrap this up, we wanna give a huge shout out to Corsair for allowing us to give our impressions of the Corsair 6500 series of PC cases. But we wanna know what you think. You've heard a lot about what I think, but what do you think about Corsair's design? Would you use it to build a back connect system? And how would you customize the removable panels if you, could, if you could customize them your way? Let us know down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, go ahead and slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this right here on Robitech. Also, if you have questions or you wanna talk more about PC cases or what parts to put inside of a case like this, head on over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash robytech, where we have like-minded people who love to talk about tech, and you know what? You might make a friend. Also, feel free to follow us at Robitech absolutely everywhere. Thank you so much for watching this video. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.